We're in the underhells. We're really getting in depth here. Tile four, everybody. I really used a bunch of kits on this, starting with the tile, columns, platforms, stairs, and a whole bunch of 3D pieces and other stuff. Welcome to JD in the Sump Sea. Always start with a spinning tile, guys. Yeah, we're using the drill again, we're doing a little bit of clipping. Um, so I was a bit stumped on this tile, uh, to be perfectly honest. Uh, I wasn't, I knew I wanted to do a fourth. Um, we had the release come out. Um, you know, I got my pre orders in and everything else, and I wasn't sure which way I was going to go with this tile. I knew I was getting a little shy on some of the Zorn Mortalis stuff. Um, you know, the, the original plastics I have. Uh, turns out this tile used up all my columns. Uh, I am having a friend of mine print me some more so I can keep doing this stuff because um, I'm really getting into it now. But uh, yeah, it, it, when I figured out that I only had five columns left, it kind of kind of changed the way I was going to do this. So um, I went digging through uh, some of my favorite channels, um, especially with ones that uh, uh, build Zone Mort stuff. There's plenty of them out there, but um, one of my favorites is Rapid Tabletop, the legend Leo. Um, he hasn't put one out in a while, um, but if you need inspiration on how to build you know, zone mort tiles, that's the guy to watch. Um, this little pipe trick that I have here on the doorway, uh, that that's from him. Um, most of the other stuff's mine, but um, the platform uh, it, it comes from one of his tiles that he did. He had a bar on his, but of course he was making uh, Hive Primus. This is Secundus, so, you know, I was digging around when I finally got the, when I finally settled on the idea. Uh, I was digging around with stuff, and, uh, and and the other, the tile I'm using as inspiration, it was a four, uh, four platform set that he did. Well, I have those 3D prints that you saw me uh, install on that uh, hive wall a couple of, a couple of videos ago. Um, so I figured, you know what, I'll have a bigger one here. And I, this coincides with some, uh, a couple of requests I had on a few, uh, one of the one of the other three videos that I had, I can't remember which one, but it was like, what, was, what would it look like with the floor collapsing and the actual bomb damage that would be happening in Secundus? And I kind of wanted to portray that a little bit without cutting up uh, one of the GW tiles. Um, I am going to cut up one of the GW tiles at one point here. I'm just not quite ready. Um, you only get one shot at those. So uh, this kind of stuff isn't going to be a clean uh, cut or break. So I wanted to practice on some stuff that, you know, wasn't so expensive. Um, I got all kinds of those uh, 3D printed tiles that my buddy Mike did for me. Um, which, thanks again, Mike. I really appreciate it. Um, this is just getting out of hand. Um, I, I found that uh, 3D printed uh, squid tentacles coming out, or octopus, whatever you, the kraken, whatever you want to call it. They, uh, it, it was hard for me. I was going to try to use that piece on several several different things with the sump and everything else but the way it was printed it, it, you know it's very straight and i saw that and i went oh my god i was like this is gonna be perfect what are we gonna what's it gonna yank down 
Um, so I was uh, playing around with uh, Sector Mechanicus stuff, um, and you know, I, I just used the uh, uh, Magdevent um, in the last tile there, um, and that was a you know, it was great. But, you know, I tried trying not to copy myself too much, um, so I thought, what the heck? We'll we'll get. Uh, We'll get into the stronghold kit. Yep, here we go. We're going to start putting some fire on these things. <laughs> if you're going to try to do something like this, kids, be very careful. Um, I have been melting and doing stuff for a living for a long time. Um, you don't need very much. You don't want to light it on fire. You know, so it's going to be several swipes uh, to do it. Um, I did also do this on the uh, gunk tank that I'm dropping down. That's what he's grabbing. Um, but when I when I opened up the stronghold kit, I started getting some other ideas. Because one of the deals with this whole thing was I was trying to figure out how I was going to mount that platform. Um, and I saw the concrete barricades, and here, here they are. Um, works perfect absolutely the right height uh for what i wanted to do this is going to be very um it, it's a spacious tile even though it's not you know it's still tight it's still only a 12 by 12 tile um so but yeah this is really cool how that's set up just like that i got some extra 3d printed stairs um and I'm going to let you guys keep watching me build here for a second. Okay, painting. So, um, you know, this is pretty much the same as what I did on the other three tiles. Um, this green, again, it's a blue-green ink from Liquitex um, with, uh, I added a couple of drops of black onto it to make it nice and cold. Um, also, uh, it works really well with the dark purple sh shadowing that I do later on. This, if you guys haven't figured it out, is a little bit longer video. Um, I did get a couple of, uh, not comments on the video itself, but a couple of comments from my friends that, boy, these are really fast. It's hard to see what you're doing because you're going so doggone quick. So I figured I'd slow it up a little bit for you guys. Um, there's no oil painting in this. Uh, I have some extended uh, shadowing techniques. And I also have um, a little bit, well, we're doing the sponging technique. One of the upgrades that I did with this is I'm now dipping that sponge into all three paints at once. Um, it's making it a bit quicker. Um, I like the texture. I'm using the, uh, that's, a, that's a scrub sponge. So I'm not using the uh, uh, sponge side of that. I'm using the, uh, the Brillo pad side. Um, really like the way these textures are coming out. Um, but one of the big differences with this one is the metallics that I did on this, I actually air gunned. Um, there's way more metallics on this one than there were on <laughs> the other three. Um, so I was using a brush, but yeah, with this one, there's there's 
yeah, there's there's a ton more. Uh, I was really surprised at the pipe work, tank. Um, I got that promethium uh, you know, uh, pump sitting right there. Um, yeah, barricades, all kinds of other stuff. So I decided to use it with the airbrush this time. Uh, this is uh, GW Air Runefang Steel. And I thinned it out with Liquitex uh, Steel Ink. Um, if you've been watching the channel for a little while, you'll know that I really tend to like favoring thinning uh, paints down with ink so I can get, uh, well, saturation. It doesn't really work that way with metals, um, but it's really nice to be able to even get like a half shot um, cause you have to keep, you have to keep stirring this as you're, as you're going along with it. Cause otherwise the metal flakes go to the bottom and then you get a clock. Um, so yeah, you gotta be pretty much constantly stirring this while you're, while you're doing this. Um, the metallic ink at least gives me something there, even if the shot, you know, does a half shot. Um, if you've never airbrushed before, you probably don't know what I'm talking about, but <laughs> It's uh, it's it's one of the things that happens with airbrushing that you have to worry a little bit about, and it, um, it you know most of the time with that your pressure is up a little too high. Um, with the metallics, it's because the uh, metal chips, or not the metal chips, but the mica and the that they use to mimic metal is uh, falling to the bottom, so it's just going to be you know clogging your area. So here we go, we got powder work going. I didn't show any of the oil painting on this one. Um, yeah, it's, as you probably have realized when you started watching this, this is a pretty long video. Um, I did slow things down a bit um, and I gave you a couple of different shots here uh, so you can take a look at you know how I'm doing it. Um, on this particular one, I left the spirits um, a little bit more wet. I did this earlier in the uh, process. I usually do the, the oil and um, I'll let it dry enough so that the spirits are, you know, not so much pulled up and things. I mean, there's still some on it when I start doing this normally because I want to use the spirits as the fixer or the, uh, yeah, the fixing agent uh, for the powders. This one I wanted to try a little bit different. Um, I'm actually mixing the uh, powders um, in and it's really getting, you know, you're seeing it wet right now. So it's a little bit different look. Uh, the final shots at the end there, you can see how the powder is actually level or layered up just like acrylic paint does. Um, with the colors. Uh, a little bit more rust on this one, not as much as the first two, but um, a little bit more than that last tile. And I'm going to let you guys uh, take a look at this uh, and not listen to me jabber. Uh, we'll get to the end shot, so I'll see you then.
Okay, you can start seeing how those powders have dried. They're really, you can, you can definitely see definition going on with them. And it's, yeah, this has been my favorite one so far. Um, at least until the next tile, of course. <laughs> I'm having way too much fun, you guys. Um, thank you so much for stopping by. Jay and I are ecstatic with the turnout. Um, it's, you know, I can't wait for the Secundus box to show up so we can do an unboxing video. You know, it'll be late. You know, all the big guys have already done their stuff, but Jay and I have a little different take on that kind of stuff anyways. So um, it will be coming up as soon as we get the tile. So um, yeah, there's gonna be a couple more tiles after this. I'm having way too much fun, but uh, thanks for stopping by you guys. And as always, please like and subscribe.